Hi girls and boys, welcome to Elementor Tips and Tricks video clips. I've made this video to show you how to create image blobs in Elementor. There are three videos before this one and if you skip them or some of them only, find the links in the description below. It might be easier to catch the point if you watch them in sequential order because each video is like a milestone to the final goal. Anyhow. What you can see on the screen right now, we are at the very top, is as usually a couple of card boxes, both of which having an image in text title, a fancy border around the box, button background, be it gradient or image background, and a cute gradient like avatar thumbnail border. I actually turned these regular boring card boxes into beauties step by step across previous three videos and if you take a look at the very first video you'll see how crappy they were at the very beginning. So what are blobs? Maybe you already stumbled upon the information that 2019 will be all about uh, curved lines and soft blob shapes when speaking of design trends of course. Blobs are those bumpy circles that look like ink drops rather than ink splash. They might even sit one next to another and form small clusters or be colored, semi-transparent and overlap each other, etc, etc. Essentially, these blobs are nothing but design elements that are supposed to capture user attention, just like big bold text or some crazy image. So the idea here in this tutorial is to create blobs out of photos in Elementor. Blob images are actually images with the mask on top. The mask itself is just another image and it must include transparency. More precisely, the mask image must be black and transparent. Not black and white, but black and transparent. And it works in a way that black parts make underlying photo visible, while transparent parts make everything else hidden. So, in that fashion, we gotta create our blob shape either as the SVG or PNG file type. I have created several blob shape shapes for the purpose of this tutorial, even though I'm gonna use only one. So, let's take a look at the media library first. I'll open, I'll open some uh, background panel in order to be able to just access the media library. There they are, here they are. As for the shape, it can be anything you can imagine. Uh, here I have a hexagon, uh, regular blob shapes, uh, multi-shape blob, uh, stripes, uh, I don't know, whatever. All of these are SVG files because SVG has a very small file size, as you can see, it's one kilobyte only. And besides, it's a vector. And vectors don't lose quality no matter how much you scale it up. You can create PNG file as a decent replacement as well, because it can be transparent. But be sure to make it big enough in case you'll have to scale it up. If smaller size PNG tries to get bigger, it'll be become blurred or jacked and things won't look right anymore. Alright, let's close media library. Uh, hence we are about to write some CSS code. We're gonna need custom CSS panel. Okay. We're gonna need custom CSS panel. Custom CSS panel is only available in Elementor Pro version, so be sure to have it, otherwise this tutorial won't make much sense. Elementor Pro, I'll repeat, is 49 bucks and definitely worth all the money. Let's scroll down to the very bottom and see what is our goal. The bottommost card boxes already include blob images, while uh, our working example card boxes still have that gradient border. Okay? These two do not match visually at all. Okay, that's simply because I left them so 
for the purpose of previous tutorial. So I'm going to detach border first, remove 100 pixels width limit and use full width image instead of 150 pixels. I'll do that for both images, one in the first card box and the other one in the second card box. That's how we can have a clean start. Okay, let's do it now. Select background, delete. I also have to remove uh, padding. Okay, remove padding. Then go to style and remove uh, the border. And also remove border radius. Now go to content tab and select full size image. Oh, forgot to remove the width limit to 100 pixels. So that's it. Now I'm not going to do the same. Uh, I'm going not going to repeat the same procedure for the procedure for the second image. I'll just copy paste the styles from the first one. Okay. So right mouse click, copy, then right mouse click on this one and paste styles. Okay. Now all I have to do is to reselect image size which is full. All right. There you go. Now, uh, my first image is already active, but if it's not, you can click on that pen icon or just click on the widget itself anywhere. And I'll select advanced tab and then expand custom CSS panel. So, Let's add our custom CSS code. As usually, I'll start with selector keyword and open close curly brackets. By using selector keyword, we are referring to our image widget itself. Selector is kind of a shortcut that tells Elementor we want to refer that very element. Okay, as simple as that. So. Uh, the CSS properties we are, that we are going to use are the following. The first one will be mask image. Mask image. Okay. URL open close brackets. And now in order to find out the path to my mask image file, I'll open media library. First I'll go to background panel simply because it lets me access media library. I'll highlight my file so I, I ain't gonna select anything just copy file path like this okay highlight file path right mouse click copy close close background panel open custom CSS and simply paste the the path to my mask image file okay now the next property is going to be mask mode. Mask mode has to be set to alpha. Okay, alpha. This keyword indicates that the transparency value of the mask layer, which is our SVG file, should be used as the mask value. I already said that a couple of minutes ago, if you remember. Okay, the next one is going to be mask size. And it has to be set to contain. Okay, contain. Why? The mask image will be scaled as large as possible and also maintain image aspect ratio. I could use cover keyword, but that leads to clipping. And our mask might look like it's cut off. Make a test on your own in order to understand the point of cover and contain keywords. Maybe after we finish this tutorial. If you want to get more familiar with mask size in general, of course. Okay, the next one. Mask position. Mask position. Mask position. Mask position is going to be top center. No, no. Top center. Okay. Just to keep it on top, in top, and centered horizontally. If I use top left, the mask will move to left. However, if I do that, it will reveal portion of image that doesn't show much. 
and I, I would rather like to keep the face of uh, the girl on a picture in focus. Of course, I can use smaller size image or just a thumbnail instead of full size image and thus have more control over the alignment. I'll talk about that a little bit later, I'll mention it a little bit later. And for now, let's just use top center, okay? Uh, and finally, we need to set mask repeat. Mask repeat is going to be no repeat because we don't need the mask to be repeatable. And that's it. There it is. Looks good. Okay? But unfortunately, it ain't gonna work in the WebKit browsers like Google Chrome and Safari. No worries. It's only due to the fact that they still don't understand mask CSS properties without WebKit prefix. So we'll simply select all the properties we wrote here in our CSS panel copy them and paste below and paste above sorry so I'll just dupl duplicate make a duplicate of all the properties okay like this <clears throat> so uh, what is left to do is now is to prefix duplicates with webkit keyword let's do it And I'll just copy and paste to all other duplicated properties. Okay. And that's basically it. The most likely, you wonder how to control position or alignment of the image being masked. I already mentioned that a minute ago while I was talking about mask position CSS property, remember? And at this point, mask position is set to top center simply because the face of the female on photo is in the center. And we are dealing with full-size image that takes all the available horizontal space. First of all, you cannot just move that blob at will and say let's align to left or center or right okay the entire blob you can do it with the mask you have to be aware that there's a whole lot more underneath the mask than just the blob okay it's it, it's a full size image underneath i can move the blob i can move the mask let me show you if i select mask position to top left i move the mask but now the face is out of focus focus all right it makes sense top center so in order to answer the question I'll have to say that there is no reliable way to control blobs alignment as is if full-size image is used what you can do is either to a upload image to media library whose focus will match the position of blobs visible area or B, play around with different image size and thus make it alignable, so to speak. Let me show you what I mean by that. Select my image widget first, go to Content tab and select 150 by 150 thumbnail size. The mask is still covering top center position, so let's fix that to Custom and I'll say mask position top left okay now uh, the image is now way smaller but alignable alignable within image widget boundaries I hope it makes sense so far so in order to make the long story short masked image will be responsive only if not restricted by setting the size fixed but that way you can only move or align the mask while the image doesn't move anywhere it's always full size horizontally that's all or otherwise you can set the image size correspondingly 
in order to be able to control alignment and in the same time keep desired portion of image visible inside the blob shape itself. I suggest you to play around with options a little bit and find what works for what works best for you. It's some kind of a compromise, so to speak. Okay, let's now get back things as they were, top center. And image size has to be full. Alright. Now in order to make my second image blobby, I'll simply copy paste styles. Okay, right mouse click, copy, right mouse click, paste styles. As simple as that. Elementor is freaking awesome. <laughs> now update and let's check all in Firefox, Google Chrome and Safari. I already said that, that, that I'm on Mac and don't have Edge nor Internet Explorer nor I plan to have or use them but if these two belong to so-called Modern Browsers Fellowship then there shouldn't be any problems. Alright, Firefox it all looks good, no need to refresh because uh, whenever I update it, things get updated automatically in preview tab. Now Google Chrome, oh it's already there, okay refresh, it all looks good. Let's try to scale it, yep it's responsive, okay. Fresh. Okay, and that's basically it. All looks good. However, let's get back to Elementor for a moment. I have to pay your attention to a minor problem when using masks. You may be spotted already. And the problem is. When I mouse hover any element or widget in Elementor, as you can see in Elementor's workspace, it shows and hides their bounding box and icon, thus allowing us to actually interact with these elements in a more user-friendly fashion. However, that's not the case, as you can see, that's not the case with our blob images. So why is that for? Because the mask is hiding their bounding box and icon too. As simple as that. But don't think that you cannot access these widgets. They are accessible. You can normally click them in order to make them active or highlighted. You can use right mouse click to open context menu. So everything works just fine except the fact there's no bounding box on mouse hover. Alright. I suppose you can live with that. By me, it's just a small sacrifice if compared to what can be achieved by using image mask. This might be called col collateral damage, if you like, but as I said, you could probably live with that. Maybe because there's no other way around, no other option. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed this final tutorial. If you did, give me a thumb up subscribe spread the word share comment if you do that i'll make more elementary tips and tricks videos stay tuned and goodbye